Welcome to the Log Time Podcast. We dipped to the mystery garbage again, and we came out with a surprising winner, the anime Seirin. We get to talking about bus driving, deer sex, and steamy desks in this one, so you'd be missing out if you didn't stop in for it. Yeah, so uh, what a great winter show. Yeah, oh. why, why do you say that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It just gave me this huge, like, winner vibe, like, the entire show. Was it your really comfy vibe that you got from it? Was it what? the fact that there was literally a whole Christmas Eve arc at the end of the third arc? Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I really have no justification for saying Wait. that. I was just memeing. Lads, <laughs> lads, backloggers check. No snow in this one? No, there was snow. It there happened was literally in like, snow in this one. There, there's snow in like the last like five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Like, I was okay. like the whole. I was <laughs> like, are we really gonna have like a whole like final arc around Christmas and not have <laughs> snow? And then it's it happened. Closing like, on, it it's closing on two separate Christmas Eves, and it has snow, bud. I'm just making sure because if there's no snow, it's no anime. Every uh, anime has snow. And it is true. good of you to be vigilant about that. Because here at the Backloggers, we don't want to do anything that's not anime. Yeah, we, we sh- would have had to stop the podcast. Like It's the shortest one we ever make. It's like two minutes. <laughs> it's not anime. Yep. End of podcast. <laughs> yep. 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 Get the shit well, out of anime. here. anime? That's the question. Um, um, yeah, so, so you go ahead. Good boy. I was just going to say, so Matt, to expand on your your statement that it was a good winter anime oh let me extrapolate okay was it a good anime was it a good anime well okay so let's let's think about this for a second what constitutes is a good anime (laughs) (laughs) let's get philosophical no um i don't know i thought it was fine yeah i thought it was i thought it was fine yeah i i i I, I think with Saren, we got uh, one good anime, one great anime, and one pretty alright anime. That oh, is... between the three characters? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're the... saying that the anime changed its level of goodness between the arcs? Well, yeah, I think so. Yeah. With, with, with Saren. Say like I I haven't seen an anime that has quite handled itself the way that Saren does, and that like I, I've never watched an anime that has behaved like a multiple route visual novel. Right, like where where each each arc of the show is literally like go back to the save point and start there again, and but it's a different girl that you're going that that you're attempting a romance with. Right, and that's a unique thing. Like it is each arc within the show it's not like you know fate where there's the unlimited blade works movies and or wait no shit um it's not like fate where there's unlimited blade works and there's a whole separate like heaven's feel that's like a series of movies and then everything else that's all different routes like this is literally a one course show that has three completely different diverging paths and it's really cool actually to see that because it's uh it reminded me a lot of majora's mask in which like there are some set things that will always happen and then other times because we're going through the same span of time you see that it's like oh okay this action actually caused this to happen instead of this and i'm like oh that's cool oh yeah i, I really do like the part of majora's mask where link uh, huffs his school desk where some <laughs> girl had just had her ass, and there was ass steam on the desk. That was one of my favorite parts of George's ass. Okay, I love all right. That. Well, <laughs> what? 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 He's not that wrong. Never had, what kind of version of a George's mask did you guys play? <laughs> Holy shit. He's not wrong. <laughs> Saren did do that. <laughs> I mean, no, but Majora's Mask didn't. That's what I'm taking this shit. <laughs> Am I the only one that got steamy when the Gorons came up? Like, what's up? The, oh, those big fucking muscular dudes? Hell yeah. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> God. I'm so sorry. This is... I didn't mean to derail us so early. Um... <laughs> I, no, I will say that is probably one of the weaker points of the show is is our main character. Because uh, there ain't no reason why he's so horny. And so oh, weirdly I, horny. No, I can understand he's a growing, he's a growing boy. He's in high school, whatever. He's, he's going to be weird. But he's really weirdly horny <laughs> sometimes. Okay, so counterpoint, argument. The fact that Shoichi is so stupid horny is part of what makes this anime great. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I'm I'm gonna agree with that. Yeah, because so so here's the, uh, here's the thing: it's yeah, kind of a double-edged oh, sword. Yeah, yeah, Matt, Matt, go for it. Double-edged sword. I'm yeah. I'm kind of going with Kyle now. Um, okay. But I still agree with you. But I think Kyle described it well. Yes, and and I would agree with you as well. Um, it is fascinating to see the degrees of depravity that shoichi <laughs> goes down again um, some of us have been there before j- just ask steam on the desk again <laughs> i i i have to have you and i mean Matt, like it, have you been there before first, not not that exactly was like, what zach's doing <laughs> I, like i i i have to yeah, for like first five minutes of the show ask steam on desk <laughs> and and he got hot and bothered over it um, now, I, can't, I I have to say, I have not seen another anime that has had our protagonist get hot and bothered over ass steam on a desk. So, Saren gets a big old, big old cool blue ribbon for that one. Um, <laughs> this pig is unique. It gets before. the blue bell behind uh-huh. it. Some, some pig, so, this, this dude's got some hog that's getting weird for, 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 you know, ass steam on a desk. Um... <laughs> And I, I will say that phrase as many times as I can no. because it elicits that reaction from you, Kyle. No, don't. Um, but but so yes, it, it it is a double-edged sword because so when I say that Shoichi's horniness makes this show more interesting, I mean that genuinely, not as an actual goof. Because right. Because in any other like kind of you know high school romantic comedy sort of thing, like there's always this sort of approach to like um sex or sexuality or like just being horny and in puberty and everything sucks that is kind of the approach of like oh my god um ooh, hee hee, i looked in your direction or oh what a compromising situation with the boobs or something and i mean like it's all these very specific like stereotypical tropey kind of perceptions yeah of like adolescent sexuality and puberty hitting you like a sack of bricks which fine sure but nothing quite gets just the sheer weirdness of puberty quite like this does because like i mean let's be real i was a middle school boy and or a early high school boy and a lot of things that really shouldn't have got me horny got me horny yeah because yeah like that's just that's just how it be right and so having shoichi just be fucking weird about this was great because i'm like oh my god dude you gotta stop you have to stop (laughs) bud you have to stop all the way quit it i Um, do appreciate though that it was more of just these internal struggles for him and he didn't really do anything massively like predatorial mm -hmm, i -hmm. appreciated that the way he was written is that he's comfortable he's comfortable around girls and women and so he just ends up in these situations where all of a sudden his hormones make him think things that he doesn't want to think. Yeah, he he's not going to be a fucking like uh, nasty boy bad man about it. He's right. Just, he's just horny. Yeah. Which, you know, we can excuse that. <laughs> so the, the the fact of the matter then is the way that that kind of plays out in all the different arcs is really interesting. I personally loved Hikari's arc, the first four episodes. I loved the shit out of that. That arc is fucking so fantastic. Fucking weird. Yeah. And it's my favorite of all three of them. It's such like, a strange no setup to get our, our main girl there <laughs> where he is. It's like the weirdest fucking shit. I know. And so just the the whole completely bizarre setup and, you know, them having to 
like a play let's fucking hide this girl at this summer study retreat thing i just it's it's bizarre and the way that it sets it up like i um i watched the first arc of this when it was airing back in 2017 i don't know why but i did and like the the scene of them in the bath in like the men's bathroom has stuck with me for a while for some reason and i'm not really <laughs> sure why it's just like the 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 setting of it not anything specific that happened because i didn't really remember anything that happened it was just like the thing itself so like mm-hmm. it left an impression just because it was so completely outside of anything that i had seen within this genre before and i love the shit out of it I, um, that's that's another thing is that like the 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 characters are very different than what you would expect from like your typical like just decision choice like romance game kind of setup like they they to me at least they act very differently than what i would have expected from like because they're not really an individual trope and that's just them like they they're actually written in uh in multiple different ways they're they're much more well-rounded than just this is our our archetype Mm -hmm. right and you may not even expect that like for example like from just watching the show like in like this arc like the omnibus style um of show because mm-hmm. at first you might be like, oh, you know, like, just because you see all the girls in the opening and you're like, oh, you see them like, you know, appear like throughout the other arcs and you're like, oh, it's uh-huh. going to be this trope or it's going to be that trope or whatever. Yeah. And then but it, it doesn't becomes happen. more than that when you actually like get to that arc. It becomes mm-hmm. it becomes more than that, which I think is really good. I am so happy right. that all three girls are their writing is consistent even whenever they are not the main girl that our protagonist is, is trying to go after. And I also uh, <laughs> really really enjoy that um, we didn't get those typical tropes of like, hey, look, it's I'm gonna be bitchy towards you because he's going after you kind of thing. We never really got that. In fact, I I thought it was interesting that. Um, Hikari even at first starts egging our protagonist towards the other two girls in their arcs. Yep. And it's fucking great, man. That's such a good friend. Yep. That's such a good friend. Even whenever you're like, all right, I guess he won't date me. That's cool. You go, you go and uh, I'll root for you. Yeah, it's, it's really refreshing to view something where there are multiple potential love interests and not have it play out like a harem. Yes. In a sense. Mm-hmm. Like it, it it takes a lot of these ideas that you would think would come up with this and it works to kind of subvert your expectations of how these things are going to develop. Like, I mean, for instance, it would be very easy for us to start Hikari's arc and think, Oh, I I see some real like manic pixie dream girl energy up in here. Right. And you know, you would not expect from the first episode to get to the end of the arc and see that Hikari ends up, essentially saying hey look so i like you but i have a career and a passion i want to follow please don't stop me in doing this i want to pursue this and then for shuichi to be like i hate this but okay yeah so go for it fucking mature like like oh holy gosh. shit dude. that's a lot more than you get from a lot of other anime yeah and then they I pull know. it and then they pull that whole chasing amy where it's like five years later they come back together and it's like oh how sweet <laughs> yeah it was it was cute it's a nice yeah. glimpse it's just... yeah uh-huh and it, i i personally feel that compared to the other two arcs that both end 10 years later with one small child and marriage, yeah it's you know, like so having, nuclear family stereotypical kind of thing yeah like like having Hi- shoichi and hikari's story kind of get to this point of oh holy shit i didn't think i'd see you again here we are what the fuck's up dude yeah um because i mean like she comes back to the restaurant that he's working at at the time she's like oh so you're the college student that's working here huh yeah and so it's kind of left with this like you know maybe they'll get together and maybe they won't who knows and i i appreciate that to not have like this sort of projected future just kind of wang jangled in there right right yeah, it was it I was very too. sorry matt oh i was just saying yeah i mean I, I really appreciate that um 
I, I don't know, like, I guess in anime anymore, I always feel, like, kind of weird about, like, time skip, like, jump at the end. Um, not a fan yeah, of the, uh, the J.K. Rowling's? Not, not particularly. I'm also <laughs> not a particular, yeah, I don't know, like, for example, uh, one, one anime that really got me going about that was Suki Gakure. I don't know, I really just didn't like the, like, the little, even though that was, like, two minutes long, it just rubbed me the wrong way, I just don't like it. Mm. Um because it always feels like it's not built up to it feels like it's just kind of in there for some kind of closure right so it's there to like satisfy a certain viewer base yeah so i i think that's one really good thing that i liked about hikari's um like time skip thing was yeah like exactly what you said zach it's just not it's not closed and it makes me feel better about like you know i i guess it's like you know, you could say it's leaving it up to the imagination, but honestly, I, mm-hmm. I feel better about that. Like, kind of gives it felt more natural. I right. Guess. Yeah. Yeah, and like that—that's not to say that I didn't appreciate the end of like Toru and Kyoko's arcs. Right. Either. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because like I, I still felt that, given the chemistry that they developed through their respective time, you know, it it made sense, but it just seemed. I don't know. Kind of like you said, Matt, it, it felt a little like too closed up too perfectly. Mm-hmm. And I, almost kind of like you said, Kyle, like very nuclear family, like stereotypical stuff in that sense. So, <laughs> Ten years later, yeah. now my child's going to Hogwarts and everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just like it was. It was kind of disappointing, really, that Hikari's was the first arc that we even got because it was my favorite and it kind of was just you know uh, <laughs> a slope from there yeah like, i don't know like the I'm, the just... second the second arc was still I, very very good i think i yes. so okay yeah. i'm a big fan of the second arc just personally yeah. mm-hmm. no like, yeah i really like it here i love the second arc yeah so good um yep yeah. i also just since we were talking about time skip thing um uh, one thing i loved about the second arc's time skip at the end was the fact that he was driving the bus yeah. <laughs> which that was the best continuity when i realized that i was like all right you got me like i know that, that hit me like a sack of bricks i was I like know. wow what a fucking dumb career for him why would he be driving a bus oh yeah that's what i was thinking too i was like oh he's driving oh i get it <laughs> he wants to support and his he, fam he slid in just perfectly yeah. <laughs> it's like oh my fucking god you nerd your arcade game <laughs> playing a bus drive and paid off <laughs> oh man what a yeah i just it what a thing it's, it's so good it is it's so very good and and like to be fair you know the the end with the continuity in in kyoko's timeline made sense as well with him working as an editor for you know for manga and the kind of the way that they got together was you know working with that you know maho shoujo manga and growing up loving that stuff so it it also makes sense yeah the endings it it also has some sense made it also calls back to in the first arc where we see him talking to the uh the counselor and she wanted him to go into manga so it's kind of like a oh Mm -hmm. cute oh yeah little Uh, button on it that's that's that is a nice little like I know I just said I hate time skip endings, but honestly, like, <laughs> uh, but I was mostly okay with all of them in this show. Like, I know we just expressed a whole list of reasons, like, why they could be good or bad here, but I, uh, I was it depends on okay how you okay with this. D- yeah, it depends on yeah, how you do it. Like, <clears throat> but, but yeah. I think the fact of the matter is, I, um... I really didn't expect to like Saren as much as I did. Like, it, I, I'm not saying I loved the show necessarily or anything. No, like that. yeah. Um, like, I mean, it's it's not something I would actively seek out. I mean, I only watched the first four episodes when it was airing for a reason. But you know, I, um, I thought all three arcs were interesting and pretty good in their own way. Like, I would have watched, for instance a whole like 12 core about shoichi and hikari yeah um, absolutely i might have done it between shoichi and toru i thought their chemistry in that was fucking great 
and all just like the dumb you know deer raising game stuff and the oh my god we have to haha fuck to make a new deer but haha like what if unless <laughs> and, you know, i just love the awkwardness of it like it was the, it was se- so the second good. arc was just totally my jam i was just like no this is this is so good yeah and like i don't want to just like dunk on kyoko's arc or anything like i didn't hate it but it was kind of the closest thing that we got to a, a quote-unquote standard sort of thing like this you know uh, yeah. childhood best Mark. friend yeah like I mean, it's, it's the closest to like a you know childhood best friend girl next door it also it also seemed really get from a romantic comedy school anime yeah which, again i didn't hate it it did it pretty well but i just it was the least interesting to me especially coming after hikari's and toru's yeah I, right i, I kind yeah. of agree um i also thought it was weird that like uh, kyoko like just kind of was self-inserted in that because like in the other two arcs you get nothing of her i genuinely even forgot she was a character <laughs> so so then i go into like the third arc and i'm like wait what oh shit okay <laughs> we got this girl now yeah, so you didn't really get a lot of screen time before that, so it felt no. like... Uh, so, uh, here's something that um, I know we're going to get a little off track, um, because I wanted to talk about um, the second arc more, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I want to mention this, that... Uh, did you guys notice that, like, there were... there were So there were six girls in the opening, but then there were only, like, three arcs. Um, I, yeah, yeah I, I did I, notice I had, that. I have to wonder if they were ever going to make a season two, and then like something happened, and it just tanked. It just didn't get the ratings that it needed, or something like that. Yeah. Is is it is it that or because I know that this is sort of a spiritual successor to the series Amagi SS. Oh, Amagami. Oh, yeah, oh, Amagami. That's it. Thank you. By the um, way, I'll praise the shit out of that show too. Um, but yeah. Does it does it do something similar? It does the exact same thing. I oh, mean, okay. Yeah, it's a alternate route format, but yeah, very good. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, and so those girls have nothing to do with Amagami SS. Um, no, is it like two different OP? schools basically? Um, okay. I think it's like this is like, I think this anime takes place. Don't don't quote me on this. It's either two different schools or this is like ten years in the future or something. Oh, okay. Mm. So it's like some. Some weird... Oh, so, okay. Actually, this actually brings me to a good point. You guys yeah. remember in the uh, in Kyoko's arc when they mentioned that guy on the bench? Like, they like some they were... Uh, I think the guy they, that's watching them play as the Maho Shoujo kids? Yes. So that's actually yes. the main character from Amagami. Um, oh. Oh, so, okay. Oh. So, yeah. Interesting. So yeah. they were taking, taking the piss out of their own character there. Um, a little bit, yeah. Um, well, technically, I mean, they took a piss out of him in the original show because, I mean, the whole premise was that he got dumped, like, on Christmas Eve. So. Damn, oh. and that's brutal. What, like, anyway, <laughs> anyway, oh, Omega no. SS is, like, its own show that's really good. Um, but, um, but, yeah. Um, anyway, the, the second arc. Second yeah. arc. Yeah, yeah. I, yes. uh, one thing I really liked about Toru's arc was that, like, and and this is and this is one good thing that I just I like when series do this. Like they they got like the the family dynamic. Like when uh, Shoichi went over to her house and like met her brother. Like mm-hmm. I thought that was like a really just yeah. Interesting, like, her, her brother I was thought, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know, I just, I don't feel like anime does that a lot. Like, parents no, and family yeah. members are just kind of like, oh, extra characters, cool. Right. Oftentimes, like, old, like an older sibling or their parents, like, whenever this boy comes over, they're just like, no, don't you fucking try anything. Or they'll be like, why haven't you fucked my sister yet? And you're like, what the fuck? Why are you saying this? <laughs> it's like, why are you only operating on one extreme or the other? Right. <laughs> It's very weird to get a dude that's it's just like fuck off uh, or fuck on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so it's just very weird to have like this older brother character that's just like, oh, you're a friend of my sister. It's cool. Hey, how you doing? It's like, oh, wow. It's I don't know why this is refreshing. <laughs> it shouldn't like, wow. be. Like, Normal siblings <laughs> in anime. What? Like, oh my god. 
you're one of my sister's friends. Let me show you a fucking home video. Check this shit out. Look at how fucking weird she was as a kid. <laughs> like, so great. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I, I just really like that arc. I don't really know mm-hmm. why, I guess. But there's, there's, a, there's a lot to like about it, but... I don't know. There is. Uh, so, like, I mean, I, I enjoyed the kind of specific arc they had of developing a very specific kind of new friendship. Mm-hmm. Because, like, so between Sui- Shoichi and Hikari, there was already some, like, weird sexual tension there from, like, the get-go. Yeah, they've always and kind of been interested with, in each other, it seems. With Shoichi and Kyoko, there was the kind of childhood friendship thing going on. Yeah. So with him and Toru, they were basically strangers, and they bonded over a common interest in their hobby of gaming. And so I kind of liked seeing them actually go from just, you know, gaming buddies and then being like, oh, oh, you're actually pretty fucking rad. I, I kind of like you as more than just a gaming buddy. Yeah. And I thought that development was... <clears throat> like really genuinely like interesting and as organic as we could get in a four episode setting and that's part of why i personally liked it so much the the way that their you know uh relationship developed and i also kind of liked the specific way it approached gaming because it wasn't like one of those i'm not like other girls i'm a gamer girl kind of thing it was just like oh you're also a person that's interested in gaming and you know uh, we're we're gonna do some dumb shit and like maybe cosplay and it was all just very interesting in the way it approached this topic that is approached a lot in anime but doing it in a much more interesting like satisfying way yeah. to me anyway yeah I, I kind of understand that like would you that's... say that uh... oh I'm sorry Matt keep going oh I was just gonna say that. Uh... I don't know. I think I think I think you nailed it in a way because yeah. I felt like I don't know. I just kind of felt like it just hadn't. It felt I don't want to say natural, but it felt like the progression of events was satisfying. I guess mm-hmm. like and just it felt a uh, different in a way that other anime had done it before. Would you say that Saren? Uh, is just a really honest adaptation of this kind of story. Um, you fucking quit. <laughs> Please. I'm literally sitting here like smiling so big as I'm looking at the you, know, you fucking shit eating. As I'm goblin. as I'm sitting here looking at the synopsis that just says Saren means honest in Japanese, and I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. We keep dancing around the word, uh huh. <laughs> Yeah. All according to Keikaku. Do y'all know Keikaku means plan? Yeah. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I also kind of like the... I guess I kind of like the second arc. Just the fact that um, there's a little bit more depth to that character arc, I guess. Where they have, like, that whole, like, gaming, like, rivalry question mark. Yeah. Is it yeah. also longer than the first arc? No. No? no? They're all four. Episodes. Oh wow! Okay, then yeah, it just it, there was a lot more depth there because it just felt like it. It felt like there was a lot that they were doing. Hmm. So I really liked it. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't I, know. I. I kind of. I kind of liked the show. Like I say, I kind of liked it, but I mean, I. I enjoyed it. No, I like. I like the that, show. Yeah. That, that's the thing, and I, I think the more that I been talking about this the more that i've kind of uncovered the like degree to which i enjoyed this show because you know we we ended up rolling this one in the mystery garbage and i'm like why does this sound familiar and then i saw the show and i was like oh god i dropped this show that's right okay um but you know we we've gotten to this point and like you know, for for like Toru's arc specifically, like if it hadn't had the the end that it did, like I I think it would have been like just mwah, just perfect. Yeah. But you know, and again, I I don't hate the ending. I just I'm kind of like you, Matt. It just feels like a little too you know tying up the bow and everything. Yeah. Well, I also don't. Yeah. I, I think not ending on a, the strongest arc? Question mark. Um, yeah. Yeah. Th- God. Like, just, <laughs> It, that just sucks. Um, yeah, but I, I 
I would have rather they ended on Toru or Hikari, either of the two. I wouldn't have cared. But I, I am was just like the most milk toast shit. Like, right. I just. I think it was very smart of them to not front load that because they desperately wanted to make sure that they hooked you in with that first arc. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, I would say that the the first arc is my favorite, but the writing for the second arc is better. I feel like, yeah. and then the third arc is just meh. It's not bad. It's just, meh. It was all right. Mm. Thinking about all three of the arcs, though, like, I don't know how I would have structured it any differently. Right, yeah. Because, yeah. <clears throat> uh, because I mean, like, so ending on Hikari's would have been all right, but that would have meant that we would have had to have gone through Toru's and Kyoko's first, which... I mean, like, that that would have been fine, but starting off with Toru's would have been tonally weird, I yeah. think, because, because I, uh, a lot of folks would see that and be like, oh, starting with a gamer girl thing? All oh right, my gosh, Toru. I can already hear the Twitter <laughs> discourse. I know. And, and then if they start with Kyoko, it's like, oh, God, we've seen this before in a thousand other shows. Ugh. Yeah. And oh so, like, starting with Hikari's is the only, like, you know, you good know this- middle row. I it's think so- it also helps that uh, uh, Hikari is so important for the other characters' arcs as well. So it's sorry. nice that we got introduced uh-huh. to her first. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, what? Oh, sorry. I was going to say that it was weird cause I, because I was thinking about this too, Zach. Because one of the main complaints I saw about Seiren was... It was kind of twofold. It was basically that... Um, uh, phew, I just lost my thought. Um, I, th- I think it was I saw this on Reddit where someone was like why does Seiren have such a low score compared to Amagami SS because it's basically on Mal it's like a one point differential um, uh-huh. and they were like why is it because it, like the shows are structured so similarly what's going on right um, and somebody said well they kind of put like the most tonally weird arc first in Seiren and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess if you were watched Amagami SS, it definitely never reached that peak level of horniness that <laughs> that happened. Like, I mean, there was some weird shit that happened. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, I mean, that's where the whole thing from the pump shed that they were talking about in Toru's arc. Yeah, I know what happened there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> God. Um, All right, but yeah, so I, I was just—they were like, so I guess a lot of people didn't like putting her arc first either. Um, so no, I, I thought I was it just, was a good choice. I mean, I thought it was all right too. I didn't. I thought it was an interesting choice. I didn't think it was like off-putting. I just thought I was mm-hmm. like, wow, okay, we horny now, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, it. I don't know. I, I also I just thought that, <clears throat> like, I don't know. It just wasn't. It wasn't that much of a tonal dissonance, though. Like, even if you had watched Amagami SS, like, it was not that much different to be like, this isn't the same show. Like, the other two arcs were much better than the first one. And I'm like, they're not really that much difference. Like, Okay, was... this is this is going to be a really weird question to just kind of interject into this. Sure. But, like, please correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I swear to God, I feel like I... Does Amagami SS have something about like some girl some weird hair shit? Um, or, or is that a completely different show? Because I swear I, I I feel like I've seen mm. the wavy haired girl. Oh, from it, sex hair. Ha- yeah. Okay. All right. But, but okay. there's no so weird not- hair thing in the show. That's just like a meme. Oh. I think so. Oh. Okay. I, all right. Okay. This that is, ba- is my this only. Is, co- this is based on. I just want to point out this is based on a memory that i watched on Megami ss like five years ago so please bear with me if that is not a true statement <laughs> okay okay but like that is the <clears throat> only context i have for Amagami ss i just i remembered something fucking weird about her hair and just being like what the fuck kind of show is this? <laughs> so okay anyway back to sarah that's, yeah that, thank you yeah there you um, go no problem i'm glad we cleared that up um yeah yeah, I don't know. I thought, honestly, Seiren is not much different, despite the score differential. Like, it's really not that much different. It's it's still the mm-hmm. same show, I think. So, I don't know. More or less. 
Like, it's not telling the same story, but it's kind of yeah trying to accomplish the same thing. Right. Well, on, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, when I was thinking about this once I finished it up, I was like, yeah, I wasn't super sold on, like, the third arc. It was just okay. But I was like, honestly, if they just wanted to keep going, like, make another, make another show where it's just like new characters and just do the same shit i was like i'll watch it again I'm, uh, hell i'd watch a second season of just the other three girls like oh I, yeah i definitely want to yeah. know what's going on with princess maiden milk chan like what's going, <laughs> what's going on with her like, <laughs> like what story tell me what what story children's story that <laughs> What, what children's weird story stuff are we get out of that? <laughs> is about a princess bathing in milk? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, uh, man, yeah, because... I would love. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you know that the way we've seen Saren so far, you know that <sighs> arc would be amazing. Oh my <laughs> it would god! Be, yeah. It would be the horniest of them all. <laughs> that would be it, it, it would it would simultaneously be the horniest and the most off-putting <laughs> one horny to bind them i'm here for it though can we also talk about like uh shoichi's buddy who is you know, the whole joke is that he's a furry I um, I RIP. almost did a spit take. I thought that, and I had to double check that I didn't download some like fucking like fan sub commie bullshit because <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Like, isn't he a furry? <laughs> isn't he but, a furry? Like, like, because like, like, the last episode in Hikari's arc, they corner him and uh, one of Hikari's friends that like that that snitched on her, mm-hmm. and like she's kabe donning him like against the wall in the fucking bunny cage, like with a carrot in her mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, just playing bunnies happens. we're and just then, playing like, bunnies guys and i'm like but, hold up but then the, the the fucking end of the episode like almost you know it, it cuts back to them in the bunny cage and she's like i can't fucking keep playing house with you anymore i don't want to just be the fucking baby bunny and he's just in there holding this rabbit and he's like i don't get why she acts that way you're the only one who could play the mom. And I'm just like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You psycho, what are you doing? It's so funny, too, because he's the most popular boy in school, and, like, everything else about him is, like, totally normal. And so it just sends just... everyone for a loop. They're just like, what the fuck? Yeah, that you is... Know, you know what? Saren's a great fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I think I've had a big O moment. Scary is great. <laughs> I th- I think the way that this character or the way that this show does like side characters and makes them just absolutely lovable is is uh, fantastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's I I really appreciate this show and I I really do yeah. enjoy it. I'm like like both I guess like on a base level and on like a a, a higher level. <laughs> 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 on a spiritual level, I really enjoy higher levels. I need to know. Well, this. I just mean like uh, he found maybe, anime maybe Jesus not on an intellectual level, but on like a I appreciate art form as an art <laughs> <laughs> or anime as an art form rather. <laughs> like um, that's that's all I mean. I just I don't know. I just I just like it. It's nice. There, there there's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, yeah. something there's something about it. Like there is. I have not seen an anime quite like this because, like, its specific, like, brand of humor is just so completely out there. Like, it's just fucking weird. Yeah, and I love it. And, and, and like, not weird in, like, a, oh, uh, that's weird. Like, weird and well, just it's like, uh, profoundly, like, bizarre. It's, like, it's also it, very... It's almost like... Um, it's just completely absurdist in a certain way. Yeah, but not like. Yeah, like I just I don't I don't know a better way to say it because they play these just batshit insane things off like it's normal. That's but what. It's it, yeah, not like it's not like insanity in terms of like Nietzsche Joe bizarre. Like it is. It is just fucking weird, but weird that could actually happen. Right. Yeah. It's 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 like a realistic weird, and what makes it even more interesting is that where a lot of other shows would play up the comedy about like, wow, this is wacky. All of these characters are just like, yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Just another yep. Tuesday in high school. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bunny Girl comes around the corner and they're fucking deers in the backyard. 
Yeah, or the 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 fucking again the the milk maiden princess thing like that is just talked about and then completely glossed over. Second and we're like, episode of this entire show, they talk about how she got how <laughs> Hikari got lost in the woods and they had to run away from this evil pack of deer. <laughs> They're like, wow, that sucks. I'm sorry, I had to go through that. <laughs> yeah, I, I just like. And that's the thing. Everyone just accepts this weird shit. Yeah. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. And, uh, like you said, yeah, it's a Tuesday. Uh, I fucking hate this show so much. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a reverse big O. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I hate this show for how fucking funny it is. Like, it doesn't, it shouldn't be this fucking, like, stupid or funny. Because it, it's, it doesn't like, even just... feel like it's trying to be funny, but somehow it is. Yeah, but it's it, but it also doesn't feel like it's trying to be corny. So it's no, like, right? It's, it's just it's, it's like, playing it off so smoothly that I'm just like, wait, what? Sorry, someone's a furry. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> yeah, I definitely did have to rewind in that segment. That was like, hold on, back up. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know, man. Um, for for a role on our mystery garbage list, like. I genuinely did not expect to pull something like like this, yeah. As, as profoundly like, just fun to watch in general. Like, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it kind of dragged at points. Like, its pacing sometimes yeah. is is kind of blah. But you know, it's very easy to overlook that just because of the characters themselves and the generally. Pr- pretty solid writing of the show and everything yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. And it is nice that I do not fucking hate Shoichi as a protagonist. Oh my gosh, that is so refreshing to have That's the astonishing thing. Like he's a fucking dumbass. He's an absolute idiot in all the ways that we would like expect someone in his position. But in he's like so to be. aware about how much of an idiot he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. More or less. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's, it's like, he's an idiot, but he's not, like, uh, just completely useless or disgusting idiot. Right, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I don't know. He's just like, I'm new. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. That's the one. That's the one, Matt. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. Yeah, no, so. Saren was a good show. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Any any last thoughts, boys? I don't know why legs shine that much. I don't know. Happened in Love Live. Could happen here too. <laughs> I want shiny legs now. Like I yeah, want. I, like I want people to be like, "Why are you wearing yoga pants?" And I'm like, "I can't. I can't go. Sorry. It's like a, it's a personal problem on my part. Yeah. I can't." <laughs> Love live walks so Saren could run. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Imagine going to the beach and like you just like you're like, alright, let's get in the water, dress down, everyone's like, oh fuck, dude, put your pants back on. Oh shit. I mean they did in Hikari's arc, but it was too late in the day, so I for all we know, Shoichi sure could have been blinded <laughs> if it was daytime. <laughs> yeah, no. It was a good show. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, Su- surprised me to the very end. Yeah, I'll... less so in the end. So but this it <laughs> surprised me enough. So this came out uh, 2017. What else has the studio done since then? Oh, oh, they, they did an intro. My good boy, my my wonderful anime. Oh yeah, studio studio Gakumi did intro. I love intro. That sounds like a very studio Gakumi show. Oh, and they did Serezere Children. That also sounds like a Studio Gukumi show. I love Serezere Children. They do they they do romance pretty all right. Uh, they did Kinero Mosaic. All right. Well, they do romance. No, wait. That they was did just Koi to Oshigoto. What? <laughs> Law what? I I guess that makes sense. But interesting. No, it doesn't make sense. Please explain that to me. Actually. With the weird brand of horny humor. Oh, okay. I guess. Like. Okay, well, I guess. It's. No. It's just. (laughs) 
No. Thanks for trying, though. Um... <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. I guess that's yeah, all, all right. we have for Saren. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, I guess we'll catch everybody next time, then. Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye. bye. Hey, thanks for listening. As always, you can find all our podcasts, articles, videos, etc. at thebacklovers.com. Our intro and outro song is The Bear by Shell and the Pit, who you can find on Spotify and Bandcamp. And we'd love to hear from y'all in the comments on our site, on the podcast platform of your choice, or by trading us a red item. We've been looking for sacred deer horns. And as always, we're on Twitter at the underscore backloggers, so pull up a log and stop in for a bit.